Hi scholars, today we're going to start by solving a simple two-step equation, 4x minus 3 equals 25, and we're going to do it in two different ways, right? So the first way is uh, what you've been familiar with, so let's just write it in there, and that's using inverse operations. So an inverse operation is an operation that sort of undoes what the other operation does. For example, adding and subtracting, right? Subtracting, those are inverse operations. One of them undoes, sort of like uh, uh, gets rid of what the other one did, right? Multiplication and division, those are also inverse operations. And we're going to learn later on that, for example, squaring and taking the square root are also inverse operations, right? And we're going to learn about those in a little bit. So here, uh, if we wanted to use inverse operations, uh, we could do it pretty easily, right? Our goal solving any equation is to isolate x, get x alone. So we're going to do a lot of work, da, 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 and we want to end up with x equals something. Some junk is in here, right? And we notice immediately that the things that are in the way of getting x all alone are 4 and negative 3, or minus positive 3. Those are both the same thing, right? This is minus 3. I can also view it as a negative 3, okay? So let's start getting rid of them. Well, if I have minus 3, minus 3, I can get rid of it by adding, right? By doing the inverse operation. So let's add 3. And what I like to do is I do like to draw sort of a line right down here, put an equal sign so that I keep track of what's on the left and the right side of my equation because, of course, whatever I do on the left, I have to do on the right side as well. So we can add 3 to both sides. We take a look at what we have. We end up with 4x. And look, minus 3 plus 3 turns into 0, right? I could write plus 0 here, but that's implied. Everything is plus 0. There's plus zeros all over the page, right? The nice thing is you get rid of it. You undo that, ne that minus 3. Okay, so you have a 4x, 25 plus 3, that's very easily 28. And now 4x is really 4 times x, so, right, we want to get rid of it. We want to get rid of that 4. Well, multiplication, we get rid of multiplication by dividing. So let's divide by 4, divide both sides by 4. And 4 divided by 4 is 1, right? But I don't have to write 1, right? Really, this is 1x, but I don't have to write the 1 in front. It's implied. When I have an x on the page, it means I got one of them, right? So that's nice. We have x all alone, 28 divided by 4. Luckily, we have memorized our multiplication tables. We know that 7 times 4 is 28. Therefore, 28 divided by 4 is 7, and that's our answer. Now, we could also check this. We could check, right? So if we wanted to check, we could, in fact, take that value and put it back into the equation and, ch and see, is it true? Okay, right? So 4 instead of x, I could write 4 times 7. I'm checking that value. Minus 3, is that really actually equal to 25? Well, 4 times 7 is 28. Minus 3 is 25, so it is true, right? Our check works. Now let's take a look at this equation a slightly different way, and then we're going to move on quickly to another uh, type of equation. So 4x minus 3 equals 25. We can view this structurally as well. So let's, let's take a look. So the first step, we can add 3 to both sides, okay? Maybe it's a little bit easier to see. And now we have this equation, 4x equals 28. It's exactly what we had over here, right? These things are the same. Now, when we were using inverse operations, we had to operate on this equation. We said, let's divide by 4. That's something that we did. We divided by 4. Here, let's not operate, but let's see if we can rewrite 28 so that it looks like 4 times something. And indeed, we can, right? Because 28 is nothing more than 4 times x. Oh, sorry, 4 times 7, right? And on this side of the equation, I have 4 times x. Now look, if this thing is equal to this thing, and this thing is equal to this thing, it must be that this thing is equal to this thing, right? And we end up with, in fact, x equals 7, right? Same answer. Not a surprise that it's the same answer. But this way, we didn't divide by 4. We just compared different coefficients, right? We said these two things look the same. And we, and we uh, inferred from that that these two things must be the same. 
Now, it seems like a big whoop, right? Like it's not a big deal, but later on this will be useful. Okay, so let's take a look now at a slightly more complicated equation. This is a multi-step equation, and we're going to solve for k, right? And we have this equation. I'm just going to rewrite it. So we have 4k plus 5 equals 17 plus 2k. And what's our big problem here? Our big problem is k, there are k's on both sides of the equation, right? Let's make sure we map, keep our equation so we know where we're going. And it's not a huge problem, right? Because what we can do is we can say there's 4k over here, 2k over here. Let's just subtract 2k from both sides of the equation. I'm allowed to do that. These are like terms. I can add and subtract them, right? I could have subtracted 4k. I could have done that. But let's just do it this way. Um, here we keep our, our coefficients will be positive. But I mean, we could have done it the other way. Um, so what happens here? Well, look, these cancel. Isn't that so nice? 4k minus 2k is just 2k. I still have a plus 5. I don't, I don't just forget about this. I didn't touch it, so I got to write it down on the next line. I still have my equal sign and 17. And doesn't this look nicer? Doesn't this look like what we just solved? Yeah, sure, right? We can do this. Let's just use our inverse operations. I have 2k so equals 17 minus 5 is 12, right? Because these canceled. And yeah, I could divide by 2. Or I could say that 2k really, since 12, is really 2 times 6, right? I could say immediately that k equals 6, right? Or you just from here, you divide by 2. Or you just look at it, right? 2 times the number is 12. That number must be 6. And we could check our work. Let's check our work for, here, let's actually do it a different number. So we have k equals 6. So we have 4 times 6, right, plus 5. Is it equal to, right? I put a question mark. I'm checking. I don't know if it's equal or not. 17 plus 2 times, and what was our value for k? It was 6. This is arithmetic now. 4 times 6. 24 plus 5, is it equal to 17 plus 12? 24 plus 5 is 29. 12 is 29. It is equal. We just checked our work, right? This is our check. That's what it looks like. Now, there is one more trick that they could throw at you, right? Look at this ugly thing. Let P equals 4K plus 5 and Q equals 17 plus 2K. If P equals Q, then what is the value of K? Oy, 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 what a mess. This is a mess. But it's not really. So look, they're telling you that P is something, right? So let's use colors, right? They're telling you that this value P is this stuff. And they're telling you that this thing Q is this stuff. And then they're saying that P equals Q. Okay, so we can actually take all of that, write it as 4k plus 5, and they're telling us that that P equals this thing, which is, right, 17 plus 2k. That's the first step of this equation. That's the first step in solving this, right? It looks like a mess, but really, they're just saying, everywhere you see P, put in 4K plus 5. Everywhere you see Q, put in 17 plus 2K. Whatever these things equal to, just substitute them, right? This is just an example of substitution, okay? And now, before you start solving it, look. It's the same thing we just solved. The answer to this question is k equals 6. You're done. Okay? Great.